From Southern California, this is The Circle of Insight, a show about everything in psychology. Hear the latest in news and views on psychology. Our motto is simple. Wherever there is psychology involved, we are there. And now, here's your host of The Circle of Insight, Carlos Vasquez. From wherever you are around the world, welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we continue part two of fitness in 2015, helping you to get in shape and get to those goals and live a better and healthier life. With us today is 40 years in training, Gordon Duffy. He's got a master's in fitness sciences from ISSA, as well as Stephanie Mosby, who's been 20 years as a dancer, was a Laker girl and now a personal trainer. Thank you both for joining us in the circle. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Today we're going to be talking about fitness myths. That's right. Some of these things that we thought were true, Gordon says are not. So let's find out about some of those right now. What's the first myth that you think people, a lot of people think is true? And you're saying, what is going on here? Well, the first one I always tell people, and it's the most probably hidden one, is that exercise is solely only for your body. And it's not. It's really, really for your brain. Because your brain is the centerpiece of what tells you what to do. So if you stimulate your brain, it's going to tell your muscles what to do, right? It's going to tell your limbs where to go. And I've been fortunate to work with people with Parkinson's, for example. There's a situation where a disease attacks the brain, and you can see what happens if anybody's been experienced with people in your family with that. They start to slow down, right? Because the brain's not generating the proper impulses to the muscles to tell them what to do. So there's an indication. So we need to pick exercises, for example, that teach your brain to move at all times. And it's really the true anti-aging for us who are getting older to do things that continually challenge your brain. Gordon has the fountain of youth. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it, really, the truth is for aging, no matter if you're tan or, you know, I'm just turning 63 this year, it can challenge your brain. Oh, don't, do, don't do things that are steady state continually. You may do it occasionally, but you want to pick things that have a start and stop to it. So your brain is continually moving and stopping and starting and stopping, kind of like exercise. So those are things we need to do continually. So exercise is not just for your body. It's really for your brain to start off, and that's really important to keep, keep in consideration. Let me ask you about this. I know one of the diets, we're going to do nutrition for a second. Uh, one of the diets that people always uh, seem to be try one time or another in their life is no carbs. I don't want any carbs. I'm not going to have bread. All I'm going to eat are some rocks and meat. I'm going to go caveman style. Does that really work? Well, caveman is a little different. Uh, there's so many different things in nutrition. I was fortunate my father was actually a nutritionist. Um, nutrition is a very tricky thing. It really is an individual thing. Um, I always teach people to start the uh, paleo diet, which is real popular, because you're getting a good amount of protein, good carbohydrates, which you have to have, which vegetables and fruits, you have to have those, and a moderate amount of grains, uh, probably from yams, some potatoes occasionally. But you know, it's a tricky thing to do. The real thing is to try to eat real food, try to get good protein and fat for breakfast, which stabilizes out your neurotransmitters, get you out ready for the day, and then throughout the day, eat smaller meals, it stabilizes your sugar and your insulin level, which is the most important thing. Now, sometimes people have a misnomer about smaller meals. Does that mean we have a, instead of a Big Mac, a small cheeseburger, or does that mean snacks like peanuts? What is that? Well, you don't want to eat anything that's processed as much as you can. You want to stay away from anything that's shiny and has labels on it. <laughs> that's right, or things you can't pronounce yeah. on a label. You don't want to eat that. So, And the real reason is that one of my mentors taught me a long time ago, there's a, the hormones that play a big part of all this, you know, exercise and nutrition. And there's only one hormone you can control, and that's called insulin, right? And that goes in your mouth. So anything that has an insulin response to it, like what you just mentioned, you know, uh, French fries, all those things, is going to spike your cortisol, which is the which is the hormone you want to really control. So you want to not let it spike and come straight down. So all you have to cortisol do cortisol stores fat too, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. If you go to if you eat things that have a real high sugary content to it, it doesn't have to be processed sugar. It could be you know your breads, your pastas. Uh, like I said, French fries are a good example of that. You're going to spike your blood up really, really fast. And it's going to crash even faster. So what's going to happen? You're going to store you're going to store fat immediately. So no Mickey D. Sorry, Burger King. Um, so Stephanie, obviously, you never touch a French fry or burger in your life, right? Is that, no, is that, that's a lie. Oh, it's not true. Oh, okay. So we when, can have this once in a while, or very few. I, for my clients, um, a lot of them are wanting to lose weight. They're women wanting to lose weight. I always try to tell them not to strictly cut out everything. So if you stop eating French fries, you stop eating burgers, you're going to crave that. And one day you're going to go crazy. You're going to binge eat burgers, fries, candy, cookies, and it's not going to help. So I personally, I'll have a cheat meal once a day. If that's a little piece of chocolate, if that's a bite of a piece of bread, then fine. I'd rather do that than 
go sit at a meal and have pasta and bread and cake and wine and everything after. So I like to have a little bit every day just to keep it level. So moderation, people, yes. moderation. Question for Gordon. Some people I know in the past, I've heard this saying, look, I blew it in the morning, I had French toast, I had eggs, the day's gone, so be it. But that's not necessarily true, is it? Can they regroup that day? Yeah, and again, like we talked about, insulin's a real factor here. And if you spike it up and it comes back down, then you gotta kinda of reorganize your day and get back to whole foods, things that, you know, a good protein source, good uh, carbohydrate source, like vegetables and things like that. So you don't continually spike that blood out. Lots of water and good exercise, which also level out your sugar levels. All you have to do is look at diabetes in this country why it's exploded. And the reason why is, again, they've lost the ability to control those bad carbs, and especially type 2, and they get in that situation where weight becomes a, a massive in, kind of an issue with them, and then they fall prey, and then they end up with this diabetes type 2. It's a terrible problem. You don't want to have that. Now, what kind of an impact does water have? Water is uh, extremely important. Um, that's one of my weaknesses, I confess. Uh, there's a lot of different theories. Uh, what I was taught is half your body weight in ounces is the minimal amount. So that's a lot of water. So you know, if you're 150 pounds, you need about 75 ounces a day of water. It's got to be good water. So water is extremely important for a couple of reasons. One, it's a good fat burner. Helps metabolically pick up your, your metabolic rate. And number two, there's been a lot of evidence for people who are depressed. It's one of the reasons for depression because they're dehydrated and yes. so i've had people come to me you know with certain mood swings and things like that i got them on a bunch of water and it seems to pick up their mood so water is extremely important like sleep that's another one we could talk about too hi welcome to Adelante. This is Adelante Recovery, and my name is Yvette Kuglin, and I'm part of the staff. Adelante Recovery Center has helped people in dual diagnosis for five years. We accept most PPO insurances and provide luxury accommodations and 24-hour support. To speak with an admissions counselor, call 1-888-242-4450. A lot of time we don't even know what's wrong with us and sometimes we need to get away to figure that out. So if you want to go for a little retreat out in Corona Del Mar, which is a confidential location, we're here to help. So we're only a phone call away. Thank you. Yeah, how important is sleep for us to lose weight? Critical. From 10 to 2 your body burns the most fat. That's where your hormones are released. 10 p.m. to 2 a.m.? 10 p.m., 2 p.m. For all those late night people, you're going to be a real <laughs> challenge. So you got to turn Jay Leno off, whoever, get to bed and get some sleep. Because if you can't repair your body, you can't get where you want to go. And it's actually a real issue with all of us, particularly as we age, you know, getting up, going to the restroom and all that, or people who stay out chronically seem to have a lot of problems losing that weight or that body fat that they have. So uh, Stephanie will probably tell you, one of the first things we get people to do here at Living Fitness is we teach them how to sleep and hydrate. And those things will play a huge dividend uh, on their health and where they want to go for their New Year's resolutions. So what, do you have, what happens if you have a person who's got a job and they, they have to work till 11 or 12 at night? Sometimes they will, they'll have that snack. Uh, is there some way to compensate for that? Well, it's, that's a tough one. And I've worked with people who do graveyard shifts and stuff. They have to almost shift their calendar. Um, their circadian rhythms in that way. And it, it is kind of a challenge. Um, there's things they can do in terms of certain supplements and those kind of things to kind of offset that. But it, it, it's a tough thing, you know. We're kind of, from our prehistoric days, you know, we're used to, to go to bed when it gets dark and getting up when it turns light. And people who live in different countries will tell you, um, I have clients from Sweden, you know, it'll be dark for a long time. They have to, you know, they have to put blackouts on their walls and they have to open it up and put lights on just so they can get at the right circadian rhythms. Interesting, interesting. Now, Stephanie, a question for you. There's a couple of body parts women are always trying to work on. And they, I mean, they carry constantly almost the whole entire workout on that body part. What are some of those areas and what do you do? I would say, first and foremost, would be glutes. Really? They're very popular now. <laughs> they used to not be as popular. I would say glutes. Um, I personally, as a dancer, used to not work out my glutes. Um, I was really quad dominant, so I would say hamstrings are really important part of working out the glutes. Um, arms. Back of the arms? It's another one I use Back of the arms. They don't want they the always weight. this. Well, yeah. they're still going to have that because you have skin here, which I've had to learn. Um, <laughs> but, so triceps, 
are always, that's like the major one, and glutes, and what else would I say? Now for glutes, I know you guys do squats, and we're going to get back into yes. that in segment three. They're going to actually show us some of the exercises, how people generally do them wrong, and how to do them right, so you don't get yourself hurt, and you can get that body that you're hoping for. Excellent. So let's continue on with these myths. Anything else that pops up for you in regards to you come in here and somebody says something to you and you're like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, well, the most controversial one, and, and people could debate this, but science tells you that to lose your body fat here, there's two types of fat. Now, there's uh, not to get too technical. The, the stuff that you can pinch is called subcutaneous fat. So doing thousands of crunches is not going to identify that at all. So nothing? nothing has no effect. Okay. That's sleep, food, and stress. We get back to that. Now the muscle. Could be good you. Not too many crunches for you. <laughs> yes, exactly. Even though they're good, if you're done correctly, they're good for strengthening the muscles. And the muscle behind there is called visceral muscle, which connects all the organs to get together. And that's what e exercise does influence if you do right exercise. So the best thing for your abs, and again, get some good sleep, right? Get some good food, and try to reduce your stress levels, which is. So we actually do a body fat test where I can pinch your abdominals and tell you how much cortisol you have and what's going on there and we can actually spot reduce that belly by telling We're you- not doing that today. Yeah. Well, we can actually tell you how much is going on and how to reduce that from using these kind of techniques with some supplements. Um, a lot of exercise will reduce it because it reduces the visceral and that will kind of come along with it. But the old adage, and I broke the world record when I was growing up, I did thousands and thousands and thousands and all I did was hurt my back and didn't really accomplish what I was trying to get. And that's probably the most controversial, one of, one of the most controversial subjects. Now, do I need to do cardio seven days a week for an hour a day? Do I hear? Well, there's different ways of getting cardio. There's yeah. that's a kind of a, you get cardio out doing circuit training with weights. You can get cardio doing different kinds of ways of getting cardio. And I think Stephanie would agree with this. The best way is mixing it up. Try not to do the same thing all the time. Uh, we do do, if you just did steady state cardio like the aerobics in the old days, it's not gonna be your friend. Right, because yeah, your body adapts to it. Sorry, yeah. Miss Fonda. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I go back to that era. So you, you don't want to be too efficient. You want to be kind of inefficient, if you will. So if you think about all the sports we've invented, baseball, basketball, football, all those things have a start and stop to it. And that's kind of how we are. So circuit training with weights, we do a lot of circuit training in here where we go from one exercise to another, to another, to another. And one of the techniques that I teach and we teach uh, for New Year's resolutions, for those people losing that unwanted body fat, I call it, and weight, you can organize your program in a real detailed fashion to really identify, get your metabolic rate up, and then really burn that fat that you don't want. There's a way of doing it professionally, which we won't tell you on the air yet. So you have to come in and see. <laughs> that's one thing we want to leave off with. We're going to try to find out where can we get a hold of Gordon and Stephanie at the Living Fitness Studio in Newport Coast. Part three, we're actually going to have them showing you these exercises. I don't need to be around. But you got to watch it and learn from them. So, Gordon, where do we go? Where do we go to learn about you guys? Well, you come up here, Newport Coast. It's uh, right up here in a beautiful shopping center. Uh, the phone number up here is 949-640-2300. And it's an amazing facility. you got everything you ever want and more with the best, best training staff I've ever seen. It's uh, a lot of fun. The environment's good. And we were talking about earlier, the amazing dedicated staff to get you your goals and where you want to go. Maybe you guys can talk a little bit about that in segment three. Why Newport Coast Living Fitness is different than anywhere else. We can talk about that in the next segment. Yeah. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, Gordon, very Thank much. Thank you so much. 21139 Newport Coast Drive, Living Fitness. You don't want to miss it. Remember, our motto is simple. Wherever there's psychology involved, we are there. See you next time, everyone.